This is Levington, and as promised, I am making a new video about the Royal Charter and Proprietary Colony. Um, I messed up the other video, so let's do another one. Alright, so from your playlist of October 19th through the 23rd, um, you will click on Social Studies, Royal Charter, and Proprietary Colonies assignment from yesterday, which was October 20th. So click on that, and that will send you to the assignment in um, Canvas. So from there, click on the Google Doc, and I have another one of these Google Docs open, so I'm just going to click up here to make a copy, and you will retitle this with your first and last name and then the rest of the title, which is Unit 2, Proprietary, Royal, and Charter, Charter Colonies. Alright, let me just scoot this over so you can see a little bit better. Alright, so your essential question reads, how did proprietary colonies and royal colonies shape the new British new shape the new British land ownership? Because if you remember, um, once the 13 colonies started establishing themselves, they were all owned by the British because you know we didn't we were not America when it started out. We were owned by the British and we were British colonies and we fought the American Revolution and all that stuff. So um, go on and highlight how did proprietary colonies and royal colonies shape the new British land ownership and grab your yellow highlighter there. And this is a question that I do want you to answer. However, we need to go over everything first. And I had typed proprietary down here for some reason. I'm not sure why, so I just deleted that. All right, so um, this is supposed to be about just proprietary colonies. I typed this years ago. Um, it really is more of a comparison of proprietary and royal, and I'm going to do some more stuff because I don't talk about charter colonies at all in here. So, um, yeah, anyway, a proprietor is an owner, or it's of or relating to ownership, and it's usually used as a business term. So, back in the like late 90s, early 2000s, when you go to an independent restaurant, more often than not, you would see like proprietor and then a person's name under it. And all that means is that that person owns the restaurant. So that's what that was about. So go on and highlight proprietor, uh, owner, blah, 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 all that. And choose green because I want to differentiate that this is like a vocabulary term and this is just something that you need to know that you're going to do. Wow, my hair is a mess. Sorry, it's Wednesday, so I woke up kind of late. Anywho, what they were. So go on and highlight that and choose your yellow highlighter, please. Proprietary colonies were territories that were given to one or more owners, and the owners were called Lord Proprietors by the British monarchs. And these British monarchs could have been anyone, such as Queen Elizabeth I, um, or King George, possibly King Charles in there somewhere, but George and Queen Elizabeth I, definitely. Alright, so... These territories were given to one or more Lord Proprietors, as I was just saying. So, like, how we read that actively learn about William Penn and um, the creation of Penn's Wood, or what was known, or what is now known as Pennsylvania. He was a Lord Proprietor of Pennsylvania, because um, at the time, it was King Charles. King Charles owed uh, William Penn's family, like, tons of money, and as payment for the money that was owed, King Charles just gave him the tract of land that became Pennsylvania. Um, North Carolina, South Carolina, Maryland, Delaware, New York, and New Jersey were all proprietary colonies, which eventually changed by the 1690s, but we'll get that in a minute. So over here, go on and highlight the territories were given to one or more owners by the British monarchs. And keep in mind, um, I know that we went over this last year, but just as a reminder, monarchs are kings and queens. These colonies were run under a colonial charter agreement between the Queen or King and the Lord Proprietors. So basically, the charter stated that, all right, I've given you this land, you own this land, you're responsible for maintaining all the infrastructure within the colony. And by infrastructure, I mean the things that are there that you don't really think about, like roads, um, medical, churches, courts. Not so much in this situation, schools, but schools would also be included in that. All right, so who they were, um, I just talked a little bit about 
which colonies were royal colonies, but let's say so they're, excuse, I'm not sorry, not royal colonies, proprietary colonies. So the original proprietary colonies were again Maryland, Pennsylvania, Delaware, New York, New Jersey, and North and South Carolina. All right, so um, some of these are actually all of these colonies that started out as proprietary. They changed to royal colonies, meaning that they were owned by the crown by 1690 because of the feelings of American Revolution, revolt of the colonists that was coming along. Um, I think I t I've talked about this before, but just as a reminder, the American Revolution and the American Revolutionary War are two different things. The American Revolution is more like the ideas of the, like the colonists coming together with collective ideas that they wanted to be separate from Britain. They wanted to be an independent nation. So that is the revolution. And it's also like the laws and things that were going on that were um, giving colonists a desire to revolt. Whereas the American Revolutionary War is the actual fighting um, that started with the battles of Lexington and Concord and uh, went on until... It stopped. So I, yeah. uh, so American Revolutionary War was obviously won by the colonists, which eventually became the United States. Um, so anyway, back to what I was talking about about it changing in the 1690s. Um, the Queen King, I feel like by this point it's King Charles. I'll have to go back and look at my dates. But either way, the monarch that was in charge by this point. Um, they were becoming very concerned because so many colonists were pushing towards independence from the British crown uh, that they said, oh, wow, well, these people that we've given this land to, them owning the colonies is not going to be good for us because we don't want to give up these colonies. We need to hold ownership of these colonies, not these random people, not random people, but not these people that we've given the land to in the new world. So um, the crown, which means king or queen, they took back all of the proprietors, um, all of their deeds and um, their ownership rights to the colonies, and they just became royal British colonies again, which angered the colonists even more and also like promoted ideas of revolution within the colonies. So let's highlight that. So like I was saying, these concerns of revolution led the British to end proprietary colonies and change all three to, all but three to royal colonies. And the three that did not change to royal colonies changed to charter colonies, which basically meant that um, the British were still um, holding a hand in making, in maintaining the colony and also um, making sure that it ran to the standards of what the British wanted to avoid revolution, which obviously didn't work in the long term but they turn to charter colonies rather than royal colonies. So highlight that, please. All right, so the proprietor's responsibilities. So the proprietor held the title to the land, not the king. And that right there is why it became such an issue um, around the 1690s because they gave these proprietors the ownership rights. So basically, technically speaking, the, the crown had no ownership to these colonies and being that colonists wanted to revolt against the British anyway, that was not cool for the British because how are they going to control a land that they don't own? So they rescinded those proprietary rights and became royal, or the colonies became royal. So a proprietor was required to establish land grants. Um, he, and I say he because there were no female proprietors uh, for the colonies, they collected yearly land and farm fees from settlers, which were taxes. They created courts uh, to hear appeals and give pardons. Um, for what it's worth, around the 1690s, the British courts required certain colonists to travel back to Britain, England, uh, to attend court hearings. It was mainly those that were um, separatists, meaning they wanted to separate from the British government. More often than not, they did not receive a fair trial because you know, the British were biased and the British didn't want to lose the colonies that they had in their new world. So church, excuse me, not church, I'm sorry, court for um, the centers, like people that wanted to break away from Britain, then they would have to go to court in Britain. It did not fare well for them usually. So let me highlight all this. Collected yearly land and farm taxes. Um, 
uh, created courts, hear appeals, give pardons. And they were also responsible for establishing infrastructure. And infrastructure could be anything like churches. Like they would build churches. They would build like town halls. They would build whole towns. Um, they would construct public buildings. Uh, they would maintain ports, uh, maintain law and order, all those things. So there was a lot that went into establishing and maintaining the infrastructure of a colony. All right, so your written response, how did one acquire a proprietary colony and what were the responses of the, pro of the proprietor? So here's, here's my thing. I need you to restate the question and answer in complete sentences. Also, when you are answering these two response questions, I need you to make sure that you are pulling from these notes here to answer the questions. Please don't go Google to answer these questions because it's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for that you understand um, how one acquired a proprietary colony and also the responsibilities of the proprietor, but I need to know that you can look back into um, information and a passage, which in this situation is our notes, and you can pull that information from the passage to answer these questions. So, <laughs> Uh, also, for the essential question, how did proprietary colonies and royal colonies shape the new British land ownership? What I'm asking you there is, all right, so you have proprietary colonies. What is it that, like, how how did it change from, um, like, the early 1600s, 1607, that time frame? How did it change from the early 1600s to the late 1600s as far as ownership goes with proprietary colonies? Did they all remain propri proprietary? They did not, which we talked about here. So that's what I'm asking you with the essential question. So um, if you've made your copy, which you should have, you can answer these questions right on your copy and turn your copy into the assignment on Canvas. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, please email me and let me know. And y'all have a great Wednesday, asynchronous day. Bye, y'all.